What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This morning we've popped up to Kings Lynn in Norfolk to visit Anglia Car Auctions for their first classic car sale of 2024. Now last year I attended many classic car auctions and I even caught the bug and purchased a few classics myself. Anyway, we've got a full weekend here at Anglia Car Auctions, so let's have a look around and see what classics we can find. Right, let's kick this auction off with this 1973 Ford Cortina Mark III. Now this is described to be both family owned and garaged since new. Now the Cortina has recently been put back on the road as it was off the road for many years before. The bodywork looks mainly unrestored but it has had some parts changed like the tyres, a service, brake lines renewed and bits and bobs like that. One thing I love about this Cortina is the wood on the door cards and the grab handles. Very, very nice. Now the vendor describes the interior to be in near perfect condition and states that these front seats used to have covers on them so they are looking in real good condition. As we just turn our attention to the engine bay, here is the 1600 Crossflow engine. As you can see, this hasn't been tarted up, hasn't been cleaned up for the auction, but it's in a real genuine state and there's not actually a lot of rust that I can find under here. Anyway, the estimate today at Anglia Car Auctions is four to six thousand pounds. Let's find out what that goes for. <laughs> Now there's a bit of a myth that these metros used to come from factory with rust but this one is quite the exception and it has only covered 27,000 miles which is absolutely incredible. As we look at the engine bay it looks nice and presentable. There is a fresh MOT on the metro so you could drive this home today if you like. It really, really is one of them cars that you just can't believe that has survived. As we look inside the interior, it really is immaculate. It's had five registered keepers from new, but just look at that seat. There is no wear on that at all. All around the doors, the pillars, nice and clean. It's just been looked after. I think that really is a great example. This 1986 Austin Metro has certainly survived. And the estimate this weekend at Anglia Car Auctions is four to six thousand pounds. That three bit one, that 31 only bit at three, one bit 32, bit at three two, in the middle of the room at 32, that 3200, you're done with the car once. 3200 only bit twice, the final time, 32. I found another Ford Cortina, being this Mark II. 1300 and it's had one owner for 54 years that's crazy so it's only had one other owner for the first three years of its life and then the vendor has owned this for 54 years that's crazy the Cortina does look a bit rough and ready from the exterior but the vendor has described it to be a good solid unmolested car with all original panels on it it also states in the description that the Cortina has been unused for 30 years so that the carburetor needs some attention. It also needs a new battery and yeah, a good inspection. It also states that due to the inactivity, the car has fallen off the DVLA database and a new V5C will need to be applied for. It's very cool to see a Mark II Cortina here and even better, there is a no reserve. So. Let's find out what this Cortina goes for when it goes under the hammer. I've just made my way outside here at Anglia Car Auctions to find this quirky little 1988 Bedford Rascal Bambi Camper. Look at that. Must be the smallest camper ever produced. I just spotted this ring mark by Autoglass. It's had the windows etched. You don't see that anymore. Now the vendor 
states that this has had a new engine just 1,000 miles ago. It's in fairly original condition. It's said to have never been welded or painted. Anyway, let's have a look in the back. Now you can see, it's actually in really good condition. Considering the age of the vehicle, I think it looks really nice in here. It's definitely been looked after. Tell you what, I've just had a quick look around it and the Bedford Rascal looks in half decent condition. Now it's got a short MOT, it's MOT'd until March of this year. And the estimate is three and a half to four thousand pounds. I'm now looking around this 1991 Volvo 340. Uh, it's had three registered keepers from new and it's on the road. It's got MOT until May of this year. So it's got three or four months left on it. The first thing I spotted was that front valance. It's really, really starting to go. And the wing, it's uh, yeah, certainly taking its toll on this old Volvo. The first owner of this Volvo owned it for 28 years, which I'd say that's pretty long ownership. Uh, it actually looks in really, really good condition in here. It's showing 20,000 miles, but I'm not quite sure if that's warranted or not. I'm just having a little walk around the Volvo, and overall, it doesn't look in bad condition to the rear. The back arches look in decent condition, but as you come down the front, this front arch is starting to rust, just like the other side. But as I say, the Volvo is on the road, it's got MOT until May, and it's a no reserve, so that could be the bargain of the day. Let's find out what that goes for. I've just stumbled across another no reserve car in this 1996 Citroen AX. Now, last time I was here at Anglia Car Auctions, I come across a AX GT, which was very interesting to look around. But this is just like the, the base model. So this has only got a 954cc engine in it. It's only been sold because of the ULEZ scheme. It was daily driven up until the sale. Look at them funky seats. <laughs> the Citroen AX is showing just shy of 100,000 miles. It's had five previous keepers and it's on the road. It's got MOT until March this year. As you can see, the paintwork isn't in the best condition, but it's had a cam belt at 80,000 miles and a recent service. The main reason I'm looking around this is I'm just wondering, I'm curious, what is that worth? It's a no reserve, you don't see them anymore. Let's find out what that goes for. The little Citroen AX is just about to go through the auction. Runs and drives, lovely. Wow, there you go, 500 quid. We now come across this 1991 Mark II Golf, which is sitting very low to the floor. It's had some lowered suspension and it's also on these Porsche alloys. It's also got a aftermarket steering wheel. It's a 1.6 automatic as we can see and it's got MOT until May this year. The Mark II Golf has covered 122,000 miles. As you can see it's all stickered up. Yeah it looks quite cool. Someone's enjoyed it. The estimate on the Mordor Mark II Golf is just two to three thousand pounds. Now for sake, a bit more up my street. Here we have a Escort van, 1992 Escort van, 1.6 diesel. Looks in reasonable condition in the back of the van. There's no nasty dings in the side panels or the roof. Yeah, it's very nice and presentable. And it's also in a really, really nice shade of grey. It's sort of like an off-white. You can tell the Escort has had some bodywork, but 
it's looking in very presentable condition. There's no visible rust around the arches. Unfortunately, the fabric is starting to peel off the door cards, but it's not in bad condition. On the inside, it's got, had six previous keepers and it's got MOT until June of this year. I'm not quite sure what that is. Loads of hair, must be from a dog or something. But yeah, it looks all right in here. It's just a van, isn't it? I've lifted the bonnet to reveal the Endura DE engine. Now, this is the same engine I've got in my Mark IV Fiesta van, but this has got a turbo attached to it. So it's slightly faster. It's not as sluggish as my old van. It's still a bit damp here at Anglia Car Auction, so it's hard to tell how straight the van is, but uh, it looks in a reasonable enough condition. Don't think I mentioned this yet, but it's only got 58,000 miles on the clocks. So fairly low mileage escort van. Now the estimate is four to 6,000 pounds. That's the escort van running. It does have a jump pack on it though. So could mean that the alternator's on its way out and that's what's running the van at the moment. Or it could just be a very, very flat battery. Next up, I'm going to be looking around this 1978 Ford Cortina 3.0-litre V6 pickup. Very cool. Now, this wasn't available in Europe, but it was available in South Africa. Ah, oh, this is just so cool. Look at that front bench seat. Loving that. Now, this Cortina was imported into the UK not long ago, December 2023, so literally last month but it is all registered. It doesn't have MOT, but it is tax and MOT exempt because it's now a historic vehicle. As you can see, rocking its new UK plate. I'll tell you what, I thought it'd have Ford stamped into the tailgate or something. That'd look proper cool. But it has got them two twin exhausts, which are doing it for me. Very nice. As we can see, it's finished in this gold color and it's also got the bottom half in white. And there is that Essex 3.0-litre V6 engine I was talking about. It states that it's just had a new battery fitted and the Cortina does also come with one spare key. But apart from that, I don't think there's too much documentation with it. There's a strong guide price on the Cortina pickup. It's eight to £12,000. <laughs> I've just stumbled across another Escort van. You'll have to bear with me. I've got a bit of addiction to these. This is a 2001 Escort van. Now this was stored in an underground car park for 11 years and it's only just been recommissioned and put back on the road. It's got MOT until October of this year. So a fairly good length MOT ticket. This Escort van is looking a lot cleaner on the inside compared to that grey one we were looking around a minute ago. It's got 79,000 miles on the clocks. But yeah, it's a lot tidier, definitely. These plastic door cards look in great condition. And as I just pan through to the back, look at that, very good condition. All the floor mat looks all right. And also the sides look in great condition with no nasty dings in them or anything like that. I've just popped the bonnet and here we have that old reliable 1.8 Endura DE engine. It looks like there was a coolant leak down here. Loads of signs of rusty water has been leaking out into there. Now this is the non-turbo engine. So yeah, nice and sluggish, but really, really good on fuel. 
Overall, the bodywork looks in decent condition, but where it lets itself down is these seals. They've been welded on both sides and quite crudely welded and then just painted over with some black under seal. It's the same story on the offside seal. As you can see, a big plate has been added. I dare say they haven't cut the rust out. They just put the plate over the top of it. But I tell you what, I don't want to knock the little escort van too much because yeah, this isn't in too bad condition and it's a much more respectable estimate at just two to three thousand pounds. In this restoration section and we've got a Capri 2.8 eight and we've also got a capri two liter s we start off with this two liter s as you can see it has been crashed the door is very badly damaged along with the wing and whatever damage it's done to the inner wing it's also been on its roof as you can see all caved in loads of ripples and dents in there as well it does still have some of the interior in there. As you can see, the seats have been unbolted and put on top of other parts. It does look like this has been stored outside for quite some time. As you can see, just under the battery tray here, the chassis leg is bent, along with the front valance. The 2 litre S doesn't actually have the original engine in there. That is gone. It's had five owners and it does come with the V5 but it is offered as a no reserve. Moving on to the 2.8i, still comes with its Capri pepper pots, but this one's missing the driver's door. As you can see, it's still got most of its interior, just like the other Capri. These seats are actually bolted in still, but it does look like it's been stored outside for a while. All the dash is starting to rust up. This Capri looks to be in another accident once again. As you can see, the front wing and the front panel has been hit quite hard, but it does come with the 2.8 injection engine but that hasn't been ran for quite a few years, looking at the rust on all of them pulleys. And this one, just the same as the other Capri, is offered as a total restoration project. It's had six owners from new, and it does come with the V5. <laughs> As you will probably hear, the auction has now started and I nearly walked past this Sierra. It's a 1987 Sierra XR 4x4. Now it's had three keepers since new. It belonged to the husband, it was his company car. Then it got changed into the son's name and then it got changed into the wife's name. So yeah, one family owned and it is in a very good condition. The Sierra is showing 99,000 miles and it's on the road. It's got MOT until October of this year. Even from just looking around the Sierra for a couple of minutes, I can already tell it's been looked after. The paintwork is in great condition. It's black, so it always shows up imperfection and swells, but yeah, very, very clean. The only thing I would pick out is a spoiler. Got some bubbling on there. Unfortunately, that must have been re-sprayed at some point in its life, but it can always be done again. I've just opened the bonnet to reveal the 2.8 injection engine. It's a V6. Yeah, proper old Ford engine, very, very nice. It's covered 99,000 miles in total, and it's just had a little bit of a rebuild on the engine, and it's had the head gasket replaced as well, which cost in the region of 1,500 pounds. You can tell the Sierra's been polished up for sale, but honestly, it really is in great condition, and the estimate on this is just five to 7,000 pounds. Right, we've 
came back inside now to their other halls here at Anglia Car Auctions and I'm looking around this 2003 Citroen Saxo VTR. Now this has only covered 12,000 miles or just shy of 12,000 miles since new. So it really hasn't even been ran in. If you look at the sheer condition of the interior, it really does show the low mileage. And this Saxo has only had one owner from new. So a very, very low mileage and one owner car. Now, as I look around the Saxo, it's gleaming. All the wheels are mint. The bodywork is perfect and there's really no faults to pick out. But I have actually viewed this car before when it was for sale at Letchworth Motor Auctions and at that sale it went for £7,300 including fees and now a couple of months later it's popped up here at Anglia Car Auctions. The Saxo has had a recent service and although it's got such low mileage it has had the cam belt recently done which is always good to know considering it is what 20 years old now. The Saxo is MOT'd until April this year and the estimate today is eight to 10,000 pounds. Now I've just opened the door to this proper hot hatch classic, this 1983 Mark 1 Golf GTI. Honestly, this thing is mint in here. Very, very good condition considering the age and how many of these have been used and abused over the years. This one has certainly survived very well. The Golf comes with its factory fitted sunroof and this originally was painted in blue but in 1985 they changed the colour to green. Just opened the bonnet to reveal the Golf's 1.8 litre engine. Now the description states that this had two and a half grand spent on the engine, the brakes and just overhauling quite a lot of the parts on this Golf. So certainly a lot of time, money and effort has gone into sort of restoring this and keeping it on the road. The description also states that there was nearly two grand spent on some welding and paintwork in 2022. The Golf GTI really is a iconic hot hatch from back in the 80s. Now this one's got 152,000 miles on the clock, comes with loads of paperwork and it's MOT'd until April of this year. And the estimate today at Anglia Car Auctions is nine to 11,000 pounds. <laughs> As most of you guys know, I'm a massive classic Ford fan, so I was drawn over to this beautiful 1980 Ford Escort RS2000 Custom. Look at that, it really is a work of art with the droop snoop on the front. Check them fishnet seats out, they're worth a lot these days. Now this RS2000 is said to have been restored around about 15 years ago by ProDrive employee Michael Collins. The RS2000 is described to be in all original condition with no modern upgrades. It's showing 33,000 miles, but it's believed to be 133,000 miles. Oh, just look at that though, that is such an iconic classic Ford. All of the four spoke RS wheels look absolutely gleaming. They look like they've been freshly diamond cut or restored. It really is a lovely example and it's still even got its vinyl roof. Here we have the two litre Pinto fitted to the RS 2000s. As you can see just down there, the RS branding on the exhaust manifold. As we look around the bay, it's just immaculate. It's even got the heater bowl cover still on there and all intact. It's in very, very good condition. The RS2000 is now tax and MOT exempt. I've been looking around this for a good few minutes. The paintwork is in great condition. There's a few 
little imperfections, but nothing major. Now, I think this is estimated quite reasonably at 26 to 30,000 pounds. It's such an iconic classic Ford. You rarely see them in this sort of condition anymore. So I'll be interested to see what that goes for. As we move from one classic Ford onto another, I had to show you guys this. This is a 1975 Mark III Ford Cortina. It's a 2.5 V6. It's uh, been imported from South Africa. The Cortina really is in good condition. As you can see, the brown door cards with the brown matching seats. It is a automatic and it came into the UK from South Africa only in December of last year. So it's only been here for what? just a month really. I've just lifted the bonnet to reveal that big six engine. This is a 2.5 litre V6. As you can see, it looks in fair condition. It hasn't been tarted up. It could do with some places neatening up, some wiring sort of tidying up, but overall it looks nice. New battery on there as well, just like the other South African import. As you can see, the old South African number plates are still in the back of the Cortina, but it is fully UK registered and it is MOT and tax exempt. I think this is a really, really cool classic Ford. You rarely see these anymore, these Mark III estates. And the estimate this weekend at Anglia Car Auctions is seven to nine thousand pounds. I like this car. Here we have what some people would call a future classic, but definitely a rare car now. This is a 2002 Ford Focus RS, which is finished in imperial blue. In my opinion, one of the best colors that Ford produce. The Focus RS has got 87,000 miles on the clocks. That's warranted. It's also got 12 service stamps in the handbook. As we pan round, so you can see these iconic Sparco bucket seats. They're very bold, aren't they? And this is actually on the road, ready to drive home. It's got MOT until February, so a very short MOT, but it'll get you home. The description also states that both of the rear arches have been rust repaired and resprayed, along with the rear bumper as well. So that is the Mark I Focus RS. I would pop the bonnet, but you need the key to do that. It's in great condition. It's had bits of paint on different panels, but it looks reasonable condition. Now the estimate today at Anglia Car Auctions is 17 to 19 thousand pounds. Next up, we're looking around this 1989 VW Golf Mark II GTI, which has been extensively modified. The description states that over a 15 year period, the Golf has been modified and added performance parts amounting to the region of 30,000 pounds. I personally think the interior looks really good on this. It's got a Sparco steering wheel and it's also got these matching Sparco bucket seats which look very cool in there. It's sort of been modified but it still has that classic touch. <coughs> really do like this. It's also added some silver 
window winders, silver door handles, just nice little chrome touches. The Golf has got MOT until May of this year. It's covered 178,000 miles, and one touch that I really like is these Team Dynamic alloys. I think they look really, really good. I did just notice as well, it's got pads and discs at the rear. So I'm not quite sure if that's been converted or whether that would come with them from standard. Trust me to show the only wheel that didn't have tire shine on the tire. This one looks a lot better. Now considering the vendor states that 30,000 pounds has gone into this car over the years, I'm really, really surprised at the estimate. It's only two and a half to three and a half thousand pounds. Now this certainly isn't a classic interior, but there's always something special with the slightly more modern cars here at Anglia Car Auctions. So this is a Vauxhall Corsa VXR, and it's only covered 15,000 miles, which is warranted. 15,000 miles. Now honestly guys, look at these bucket seats. I cannot tell you how clean and untouched these look. Even the leather doesn't look greasy or used. All the stitching is absolutely perfect. Yeah, it actually still smells as well like a brand new car. It's crazy. As I say, it really does smell like a brand new car. When I lifted the boot, you just get that smell. And for a 2009 car, you can just tell it hasn't been used. The bodywork is looking in real good condition. It could do with a machine polish, but if I'm honest, it's really, really presentable. Now these alloys, some of them do have a slight bit of corrosion to them, so could do a little bit of a reefer, but I'm really trying to nitpick at this point. It is a clean car. The Corsa VXR does have MOT. It's got a 12 months ticket, so it's MOT'd until January next year, ready to drive home with a fresh ticket. I've just popped the bonnet and there's not much to see under here, apart from a lot of plastic covers, but this is Vauxhall's 1.6 turbocharged engine. Now this really hasn't covered any miles, but it does come with paperwork, which leads back to servicing several times from a main dealership. I know some people don't like hearing this, but I think this really is one for the collectors. Put this away for another 10 years, use it every summer, just for a couple of days, let it stretch its legs, and yeah, this will just be going up in value. The estimate today is five and a half to six and a half thousand pounds on a VXR. I'm now looking around this very rare 1986 Peugeot 309. It's a 1.3 GL and it's finished in heather green. With only two owners from new, this 309 is showing 27,000 miles on the clocks, which could, could well be genuine, but you'd have to check. I really am impressed by the bodywork on this Peugeot 309. It's either been resprayed or really looked after because, yeah, it is just clean. Now, it's on the road and it's MOT'd until December next year. And here is the 1.3 engine in this Peugeot 309. Albeit nothing special, the bay is absolutely gleaming and very, very clean. Anyway, I just thought that was a really cool Peugeot that you hardly ever see anymore. And it is offered as a no reserve here today. Thank you. 
Next up, we've got a Mini that is looking roadworthy, but unfortunately isn't on the roads. The MOT run out in 2023, August. But here it is today. It's a 1987 Austin Mini 1000 City. I don't think it would take much to get it back on the roads. It's, it's really just out of MOT by, what, four or five months. The Mini is showing 70,000 miles. And one thing that's just struck me is the condition of these seats. They are very, very clean. I think they must have been re-upholstered because, yeah, they literally look like they've got brand new leather on them. Always good to check that the boot floors are nice and clean. And this Mini hasn't got any rust around there. One thing I did just spot, only very slightly, just starting to go on that sort of window where it meets the quarter panel but I'm sure that can be addressed. It doesn't look too deep. And for the rest of the bodywork, it really does look like a fairly clean Mini. And here is the Mini's engine bay, all nicely compacted. I always think it's so quirky how the radiator sits like that. It's a bit of a shame that the Mini doesn't come with an MOT, but I'm sure that will fly through one. If not, it'd just be a couple of minor bits that you'd have to do to it. And the estimate is four to six thousand pounds. Now this is something that I wouldn't usually look around, but it's just caught my eye. This is a 1964 Chevrolet Nova 5.7 Auto. Now this thing is absolutely crazy. I'm gonna dive straight into the engine bay and just look at all of that chrome. This is a V8 engine. Look at the alternator, all chromed up down there, all the pulleys. You gotta, you gotta give it to them. This does look like a real work of art. Cool, look at that, proper American spec. Now this was brought over from the USA into the UK just in May 2023, so last year. And it said it only had two previous keepers in America. Now it's only had one in the UK and it's up for sale. The Chevy really does look the part. It is MOT and tax exempt. It's never had an MOT in the UK, but it doesn't need one. Just look at that, it looks proper mean. I'm loving the paintwork and also the tinted windows. I've just been reading and the vendor advises that it runs excellently with no known issues whatsoever. He describes the interior as excellent and the underneath as spotless. Anyway, we'll hear this thing start up in a minute, but the estimate on the Chevrolet Nova is 15 to 18,000 pounds. Next up, this 2003 Range Rover Vogue V8 Auto has caught my eye. It's in such good condition, and that might be because it's only done 36,000 miles, which is warranted. As I say, the paintwork is looking really, really clean, and this is called Monte Carlo Blue. And if we make our way inside the interior, it's got this piped cream leather. Look at that really really nice and this generally doesn't look like it's been sat in it's just so clean got all the gadgets all the gizmos loads of buttons on the steering wheel look at all them buttons down there this really is specced up the range rover has only had two owners from new as you can see it's a local car hunters kings lynn and it does have matching dealer number plates as well which i really do like to see when purchasing a car now here is that 4.4 V8 engine. The service book has 10 stamps and yeah, this just looks mental. Yeah, lots of plastic covers. And it's like I did just spot the oil filter. 
nicely placed up here, so very easily changed. The Range Rover is said to be driving well and everything works as should. It's on the road, it's got MOT until November 2024, and the estimate is eight to 10,000 pounds. Now we've come across this 1963 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. Now, Dad was just showing me around this because, well, it's like that I probably wouldn't have looked around, but it's very, very interesting. Now, my Dad was just showing me around the rear end of this Corvette and saying about the fact that the number plate's Frenched in and the lights are Frenched in as well. And it said they come from, obviously, factory like that, but obviously that influenced people in the UK to do that to cars in the 70s and 80s and um, he was even saying sometimes they use like baked bean tins or whatever and then push the lights in. He got the emblem on the back and the fuel cap in the centre. I think that's proper cool. Now as we're down the side of the Stingray obviously you're struck by these four exhausts going into one and then the chrome exhaust along the sides. I bet this is going to sound amazing when it starts up. We'll definitely be capturing that. As we dive into the red interior, I'm struck by how many cages are on the dashboard. I believe this is quite rare. It's a manual V8. So let's take a look at the engine. Now here is the rare fuel injected engine, the V8. Now this Stingray was said to come into the UK. It was imported in 2004 and it's had a color change along the lines. It was black originally, but it is now brown. It is showing some signs of sort of aging along the front here but yeah just very cool pop-up lights as well so when this is driving down the road it'll definitely be turning some heads now although the stingray is tax and mot exempt it has been for an mot and it is valid until december 2024 it's always good when buying a car from auction anyway the estimate is 28 to 34 thousand pounds Well, there we have it. What a way to kick off the 2024 auction videos. I've got a list here of several cars that I just want to quickly run through and talk to you guys about. Now, I just want to mention them two Escort vans. They seem to fetch really good money up at Anglia car auctions. The Mark V went for £5,000, which I was surprised at. And the Mark VI went for nearly £2,500. It did sell. It went provisionally, but it has sold. Crazy money for them Escort vans. I think both of them were in fair condition, but they made really good money. Also, I found it very interesting looking around that Saxo VTR again because I did look at it at Letchworth Motor Auctions. Now, it sold at Letchworth for £7,300 and it sold at Anglia Car Auctions for £7,000, which was provisional. So, it went way under its estimate and it's now actually on their website for a buy it now of £8,000. But I'm not sure if you guys will agree. I think that car has made its money. Um, yeah, made its top dollar at Letchworth, I think. I was also drooling over the RS2000s. That was absolutely lovely. And it did sell in the end. It went provisionally, but I've left it a couple of days. I've checked the website and it did sell. Sold for £27,500, including fees. So yeah, strong money, but what a lovely car that was. And I just wanted to give a last mention to the Mark II Golf track car. It features right at the end of the video, but it was estimated quite low, 
and it had so much money put into it, the vendor reckoned £30,000 had gone into it, and it went way above its estimate and reached £5,000 after fees. So, yeah, I think someone has got a lot of car and a lot of parts for their money. But honestly, there were that many classics that featured in this video. I could be sitting here for 15, 20 minutes talking about all of them, so I've got to draw a line somewhere. I just wanted to run a through a few things with you guys. Anglia Car Auctions, based in Kings Lynn. I always get questions, so yeah, it's in Kings Lynn, Norfolk. And the fees are 8% plus VAT. It is free entry, it's open to anyone. You can just walk in. The programs are five pounds, but there is information on all of the classic cars. And the next sale is the 6th and the 7th of April. It's a weekend long thing. It's really, really cool to go up there and check out their lots. We really enjoy it. And I hope to see some of you guys there next time. And just one last thing while I'm talking about you guys, I really appreciate everyone who comes up and says hello and they, they watch the videos and that. I had loads of people this time say they watch the video they really enjoy it and some people have even said they went up to Anglia car auctions for the first time because of the video so yeah I'm, I'm glad you guys are getting involved it is a great weekend up there I'm not trying to sell it to anyone I just really do enjoy it so get yourselves up there on the 6th or 7th of April or both days and yeah check out the next classic car auction Anyway, that is plenty of waffle to end off this video. Please do let me know your cars of the auction in the comment section below. I love reading your comments and I try to reply to everyone's. I do read them all. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. And if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later.